Uh, disappointed uh, in our offensive output, certainly, um, and don't want to don't want to take anything away from Texas. Obviously, they play you know highly motivated defensively. Um, it's a response league, and um, you know they responded um, based off their past performance better than we did. Um, and we just got to get back to the drum board and forgot to play more consistently uh, well on the offensive end. What, what happened late? You get, you get up the lead and then um, the offense kind of doesn't deliver there late. So what what'd you, what'd you see late? Uh, well, it wasn't just late. Right. You know, our offense didn't deliver pretty much most of the night. We had a small segment there where we we got it going and made some shots. But really it was our defense just holding the line for the most part. Um, but too many times, even when we did score, our transition defense wasn't great. And in that moment, it was a critical moment in the game. Uh, we make a three, which I think end up ends up being our last basket, and we give it right back in transition on a foul, uh, which, again, stops your momentum, takes the energy out of your crowd, puts them at the line, gives them a chance to reset their defense, and we just have to be better in those situations. So um, we'll get back to work and address that and, and be better the next time out. How do you fix the offensive struggles? We struggled today. We, we, we haven't, I mean, I think there's, there's a little bit of a, you know, and it's probably well deserved. We haven't been uh, we haven't been the Golden State Warriors in my six years as a head coach, but we're better offensively than we've been. Uh, people don't want to probably accept that because there are nights like this that still show up. Uh, what I always like to do is there's a reason we didn't play well, and it's because Texas made us not play well. Uh, so credit to them. Uh, what we need to do is keep our best guys on the court. Uh, it certainly didn't help not having Bryce and Avery for most of the first half. Um, but it's not just because they score. It's because they draw attention, and now other guys get easy baskets. And so Caleb got a, you know, ends up with a really good stat line but had to work for all of it. We didn't get a whole lot of easy baskets, and that's where we got to work to get more easy baskets. But um, our offense is better, and I don't want to disregard the question because, again, I'm not defending 46 points in here. I'm just telling you that our offense is better than it has been today's more of an anomaly. I mean, we've you know, we've been pretty close to 70 points. I mean, we just you know went on the road and had a pretty good you know scoring game against you know one of the best teams in the country on their floor. So we're capable. It's just a matter of mental toughness, um, ability to execute, uh, and then as a coach, got to continue to put the right guys in position to get shots. You have been a lot better from the foul line. Is that a focus deal? What, what went into that? Yeah, I mean, you know, to me, free throws is about toughness. I mean, I, I don't. We're a better free throw shooting team, certainly, than we showed. We've had these games before, um, and, and unfortunately, they they, they, they kind of kill your rhythm, you know, especially when it's guys who you're used to seeing them. You know, you kind of turn your back and start thinking about what's next and not worrying about having to block, you know, try to figure out a way to get a rebound on a free throw. Um, and so um, I'm confident that those same guys – can step to the line and make them, you know, and the next time they're out there, it's just that today was one of those days it didn't go in. Well, Mike, what was going on with Texas defense the other night against K-State compared to what they were doing today? I mean, they gave up 70 more points the other night than they gave up today. Um, I mean, I don't know if you watched the game, but but both teams were pretty, you know, pretty good rhythm offensively, you know. Um, they scored 103 also. <laughs> Um, and, and usually you see that in that next level league uh, where those scores happen. But both teams got in a really good rhythm, shot a high percentage. And so that's what's frustrating is, you know, we saw a team score 103 points on their home court and we're bound to determine not to be in position to even think about losing a game like that because that's not who we are. And to hold them under 60 when they scored 60 in their last half of basketball coming in, um, you feel like you should give yourself a much better chance to win today's game uh, than others. But, again, I, I always like to think, you know, there's a reason. There's two teams playing, and, and sometimes you give the other team credit for being better than you were. K-State was better than Texas on Tuesday. Texas was better than Oklahoma State today. Mike, 
What were they doing that to Bryce that really shut him down and, and took him out of the game there? You know, again, I think part of it, the first half, he, he's in and out. You know, we're trying to keep him in rhythm. They were really physical with him, uh, like most teams will be, face guarding, using the athleticism and length to really disrupt his rhythm on catches and shot attempts. Um, but those things happen, and you got to find a way to overcome it, get more, you know, better looks. I thought he passed up a couple ones early trying to create when he had gotten away from doing that, you know, here in the last month or so and being comfortable shooting more catch-and-shoot threes. Um, for a guy who's shooting it as well as he has been to take only two threes, uh, it's probably a sign that he wasn't really looking for the right kind of shots going into the game. Were you happy with defensively, no Musa, but you guys get 12 blocked shots. You know, Caleb really stepped up there, got six of them. What did you think of how that looked without Musa today? Um, well, it looks like the result is we need him. The result says we need Musa, right? Um, the numbers sometimes can tell that there's some things you can do well with him out of there. Um, we played with great effort. You know, it wasn't a lack of effort. Our guys like it wasn't like we played uninspired. Like we just didn't execute, and we didn't play with the level of toughness, uh, specifically on the offensive end, when it comes to having 18 turnovers and going 12 for 21 from the free throw line uh, that you need to win in this league. You know, and I think with a lot of noise around that program, people forget still a top 10 team in the country. A team that coming into the season is expected expected to compete for a national championship. And I think, you know, with a little bit better offensive execution, we can put ourselves in a in maybe a more more close to a one possession game. And we had the lead with eight minutes to go. You know, so we're getting close, but close isn't good enough in this league. You gotta get the job done and we didn't today. Hey, Caleb here, you said the other day, sometimes he may not realize how good he can be and what you need out of him. You didn't win, boy he, he when you did get that run, he was a key for getting that run to get the lead. Yeah. Um, I want to be careful because th I don't want this to be critical. Because um, I never, I'm never critical personally to kids. But this was his 102nd game. We should we should expect this from him at this point. It shouldn't be, oh, we got good performance. No, we should come in surprised when he doesn't play well as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> um, and I love him. You know, he's like a son to me. I've been with him all 102 of those games. He's going to be a big part of what we do moving forward. Uh, but it's time that he starts to do it every day. And if he does, it's not only good for us, it's good for him. Because I've said it before, that kid can have a career play basketball. Like he can make money for he can he can do what most of these kids want to do is make a living playing a game. Um, but it's hard when you're surprised to say, "Well, you got a good performance out of him today." Um, so my message to him is, let's come back and do it again on Tuesday. Do you feel like you're getting closer to getting that consistency out of him? It's a great question. Um, I. I I, I'm always optimistic. Um, it's kind of my natural disposition anyway. Um, and I, I know what he's capable of. It, there's a reason we try to play through him almost every game. Um, it's just sometimes it goes the way we hoped it would, and it's, you know, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm glad that the last two games it has. And hopefully with two consecutive games, we can build on that and maybe go get a third one. What's he saying you have those conversations with him, like when you guys are talking? You know what? You know, sometimes um, – Sometimes the kid's never been told he can be great. And so it's has a hard time believing you. <laughs> you know, and even though you get the performance, there's always that level of doubt that maybe he's just trying to fool me. And I'm not trying to fool him. Like I don't kid around with these guys. I tell him truly how I feel. And I think he's maybe the best offensive post player certainly that I've ever coached. Um but certainly if you ask, you know, or you look around to the offensive players in the country from the post position, I'm not sure how many I would take over him nationally. Um, I watched him score against seven-footers at UConn. I've watched him have 22 and 12 as a freshman against this Texas team when he didn't know anything about college basketball. Um, and so I think it's just a matter of accepting it and owning it and being okay when it doesn't go well. I think sometimes the expectations feel like pressure. And I think that's part of it with him is don't necessarily put it on him 
you know, just just let me do it kind of under under underground a little bit. But he's a great player. Um, I knew he was going to be a great player when I recruited him in high school because he was coached by a great coach. Uh, he had a work ethic. He had a joy for the game. Uh, but sometimes at this level, you get to where it feels like feels like more than you necessarily want it to be because it's not just joyful all the time. It's hard. Your coach is on you. Your teammates are on you. The people sometimes want to see it all the time. And um, he's getting close. He's got it in him, and I, I, he's going to be a big part of what we do moving, moving forward. You've been with him 102 games. Out of curiosity, have you noticed or have you got a defining opinion on whether he responds better to criticism or praise? I mean, or is it, <laughs> are you still trying to find that balance? Yeah, it's a great question. And, you know, again, I, I want to keep it about the game, not make it about the kid. But the right. truth is we, we try everything. And, and it's not unique to him, right? Uh, so I want to be careful that this doesn't become about Caleb Boone because certainly he played well today. Let's get that off the table. Uh, but at the same time, if we can get what we got from him today, 80% of the time versus closer to 50, then this team can go to a whole different level. But to your question, we've tried everything. How, how do you kind of step back and evaluate today's performance? You guys obviously don't have a Musa. It, do, you, do you put much stock into, into today, knowing that it's only January and that you'll see this team again? I put a lot of stock in every game. Um, I always have the big picture in mind. Uh, I don't assume that when it comes to the end of the season that I know a lot of people talk about teams getting credit for not playing with their best guys one way or the other. Mm, I'm not taking that chance. <laughs> We need to do everything we can to make it undoubtable that we are one of the best teams because uh, I just don't, you know, I've got enough history here um, to not not assume that that will be taken into account at the end. We need to get him healthier and, and closer to ready. He's getting there. Um, the truth is the kid wanted to play. Um, he's hurting now because he feel like he could have helped us. Uh, but my job is to make sure long term for not only our team but for him that, this doesn't become about today. And he's got a future in basketball also. So we can't we can't mortgage that off, you know, in hopes that we can get the job done. We just weren't good enough. And, you know, when we get him back, we need to be able to be better when he's back. Do you have a timeline at all for him? Uh, you guys know me well enough. I don't do that. Um, we've got athletic trainers and doctors. I don't get into projections and predictions, whatever – the doctors and our trainers tell me is the next step is what we'll do. Um, but it was hard to play today because he hadn't practiced. So we'll see tomorrow if he can go and then Monday and then obviously we're on the road. And if he's ready, he'll play. And if he's not, then, then he won't. You've had three games in a week and Q has got more and more time as the week's gone. Have you kind of seen his growth in just the last week alone? Yeah, he played like a freshman today. You know, in all honesty, the effort was there. Just had some boneheaded, ill-advised decisions there in certain crucial moments, too. Um, but that's part of it. You know, I talk about it all the time, the process of becoming a good player who understands the gravity of the game and the moment. Um, and today was the first time that he was in there in crunch time in a game like this where it's on the line. And so it's a great learning opportunity for him and something he'll be better for as you move forward. One thing about Q is... Winning is a big deal to him. He's won a lot of places in his career, um, and you know, this loss is going to hurt because I know he feels like I know he's one of our guys in the locker room that's going to look look in the mirror and say, "There's there's a couple possessions here or there that I could have made a, a difference in." When you have these close games, is it against you know really good teams? Is it difficult to balance you know a little bit of you know being proud of the guy's effort, especially being down one of your key players, but also just the frustration of being so close? Um, I think we're a good team. I, I really do. And so I don't play this thing to come close. With all due respect to Texas, and they're really talented, um, I expect to win, you know. And I hope our fans expect to win. I hope they're hurting. Um, I hope our players are hurting. Because it's, it's what you work for. So the whole... We came close, good team. The excuse part, lost on me. We compete and prepare to win. So we just didn't get the job done today. You mentioned some of the outside noise that's going on with Texas right now. Uh, with the news piece coming out, 
as a coach, are you do you get concerned playing a team because sometimes that rallies a team, sometimes that kind of folds them, but it makes them a little bit more unpredictable. You think that played at all today? You... I mean, it's a hard job to do when you focus on your own guys. <laughs> I got 15 guys in the locker room, a staff, you know. In, in a league full of really talented players, really good coaches. And so to try to get into the outside stuff that's unrelated to getting our team prepared, I just can't really put my mind there. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not good enough to focus on what's going on in their locker room and get my team prepared. So I really try to just put all our energy into defending Marcus Carr, trying to keep Dylan Mitchell off the glass, you know, not trying to stop Tyrese Hunter from getting steals. Uh, and then trying to figure out how to score against a really good defensive team, which obviously we didn't do a very good job of today. But my thoughts about what else is going on, I haven't given a, literally one second of a thought to any of that. Guys, you couldn't get over the hump, it seemed like. It's like you got got the brief, lead briefly, but you just it's like you were always climbing, could never get there. Just kind of talk about the defense and just how it made it tough for you all. Um, yeah, yeah, credit to them. You know, they did a good job of, you know, kind of taking, taking our punches. You know, we were trying to – get back into the game and, you know, they made shots down the stretch. You know, they got stops, got loose balls. Um, so, so you just got to give credit to them. What did they do so well defensively against you? You only were able to get five shots off. Uh, they did a good job of kind of um, shielding me away from the ball. Um, I wasn't open on, like, when they went post-fired, when they went trapped the post, they usually kept a man with me. Um, they just did a good job, you know, converging when I drove the ball and just not letting me really get any clean looks. So, again, credit to them. Both you guys, after they gave up 116 the other night, uh, record deal with K-State, did you anticipate you were going to get that kind of defensive effort from them? Uh, yeah, I was sure. You know, obviously, you know, anytime you give up that many points, you know, coaches is going to make sure that's an emphasis for the next game to make sure they're guarding and, you know, coming out, you know, ready to play, and, and that's what they did. So we kind of just got the back end of that. But, you know, we got to turn around, and we got another game coming up against K-State, and we got to bounce back. You guys had shot pretty well from the free throw line as of late. Is it frustrating that a relapse happened at a time like this? Uh, yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, those, those are free points that, you know, we need to that, – that are very detrimental to, you know, the end of the game. And, you know, we need those. But, you know, I'm confident in the guys and that, that we'll, we'll bounce back and make them next game. Guys, you had 12 blocks today, even without Musa Sise. Did it feel like, you know, you missed Musa most on the offensive end today? Um, we missed him throughout the overall game, really, both offense and defense. Um, you know, he's just, he's a big presence, and he brings the gravity towards the basket. So, you know, with him in the game, it allows us to get easier looks on the perimeter just because of the way he carries uh, on offense. So he, we, we definitely missed him on there. But as a team overall, we did, you know, kind of come together and play uh, good defense without him because we knew he wouldn't play. So we just tried to lock in on that area of the game. What did you see from Caleb without Musa? He had six blocks and seemed like a big energy spark in the second half particularly. Yeah, he just seemed like his motor was a lot – he had a lot more going on today just because of the absence of our big man. And he knew that. So he just knew he had to pick it up. And we tried to, you know, follow him with it, with our energy on defense. But he definitely was a big spark throughout the whole game on both ends of the court. John Michael, they really pressured the ball all game long. What did you guys try to do to counter that? And what didn't happen with, with trying to counter that? Well, towards the second half, we tried to do more drag ball screens um, higher at the top of the key just to release the pressure and get the offense moving quicker. Um, so and we, we did that a little bit in the second half. But they were just overall a solid defensive team tonight. You know, like BT said, you know, they gave up 116 points. So obviously, I'm sure they were in practice just making sure they were dialed in on defense. And, you know, we took their punch on defense today. but. You know, we just got to get back to practice, get better, and get ready for Kansas State. Caleb hits the three to give you guys a lead with like eight minutes left. How, how confident were you guys at that point that you could kind of get over the hump and get something clicking on offense? We were pretty confident. You know, once he hit that shot, you know, it, it brought us more energy. But, you know, we, we just didn't get back on defense. We celebrated a little too much on that shot. Um, but even with them getting that foul in transition, we still were pretty confident because, you know, we had tied the game or took the lead. And we were just ready to seal the deal those last what about five or six minutes of the game. How frustrating is that to, to be in a position and then just not be able to muster anything on offense the last, like you said, five, six minutes or whatever it was? It's really tough, you know, because you work so hard to get to that point. 
and just not being able to come out with the win, um, it just it sucks. But you know, you just got to take it to the chin and and just realize what we did wrong. You know, look in the mirror, each and every one of us, and be able to take responsibility for what we did and fix it in practice. Is this a, is this a growth moment? You think? I believe so. You know, it was just. Number six team in the country, you know, we got to come out punching. And I don't think, as a, overall as a team, we came out swinging first tonight. And that will be a big learning process for us, uh, watching film and, and practice tomorrow and the days after. But, yeah, I would definitely say this is it's a growing moment. You had two just big scoring droughts where you couldn't seem to, to make a field goal. I mean, well, what do you have to do to get the offense back on track for, for the next game? Because it, it's not going to get any easier in this conference defensively. Um, I think just just the little things, you know, keeping your positioning, you know, getting catches, you know, um, just being strong with the ball, just a lot of the little things that, you know, you don't really see. But, you know, they, they kind of took us out of some of our offenses, you know, by uh, deflecting passes and kind of messing up the rhythm of our offense. So I think, you know, we focus on the little things. I think everything will take care of itself because, you know, as far as like the plays and the actual stuff where we're supposed to run, it, it works and, and it's good. But we got to do the little things to, to help the plays uh, develop. Make any solace that their guards are high scoring, but they didn't have a good night either. Tyrese Hunter and, and uh, I, think they, I think they won for eight, four. Marcus yeah. Carr was four for eleven. Seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like we did, we did a good job, but you know, it's. I mean, we gotta, we gotta come, we gotta add something with that. You know, we can't just stop them and then, then we not have a good game as well. You know, what I'm saying then it's kind of. Up, up in the air, you know what I'm saying? So if, if we can, you know, just, just learn from this, you know, progress for the next game and, and just, just come out ready to play against K-State, we'll be fine. Mike has been kind of working Q in slowly, I think, in Big 12. Um, what did you see from him today? What did you like about him? Because he had some big moments. Um, he was good. You know, he, he was a spark. You know, he kind of does what he does, you know, block shots, you know, kind of just a, a pesky, big, strong guard that can that can guard, you know what I'm saying? So it, when, whenever he's able to play to his strengths and, you know, be kind of an energy booster for us off the bench, you know, he's very valuable for us. Was part of the offensive struggles just the, the foul trouble too and just kind of not being able to be on the floor consistently? Yeah, for me personally, that that – that definitely is a factor because I was out, you know, I think the last, you know, I was going in and out, but I was out for a good portion of that first half because I found trouble and that's something I got to work on. But yeah, just, just kind of being solid, you know, so I can stay in, stay in the game and stay on the floor. All right, we'll wrap up players there. Well, Coach, it's really Thank you. Thanks, guys. Yeah.